it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the super easy cowl for the absolute beginner. This is a wonderful project if you're learning how to crochet, or if you'd like to learn how to crochet in the round for the first time, or if you just kind of want to jump back into crochet and you might need a little refresher to kind of get started again. This is made with a self-striping yarn, although you can use any yarn, solids, heathered, tweeds, uh, self-striping, variegated, anything you like. Um, I chose to do a self-striping yarn to make it much easier to kind of just start the project and let the yarn kind of create the stripes for me. This project is about 11 inches tall and our cowl is about 40 inches all the way around. You can change the starting chain because there's no particular stitch count to make your cowl a little bit smaller or wider if you like it to be. You can make it very, very wide and make it into an infinity scarf. And I love how these colors just uh, are so happy and just kind of play out in these fun stripes. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook. You'll need a tape measure or ruler, which is helpful for sizing. You'll need a tapestry needle, a pair of scissors, and your yarn. I'm going to be using a yarn called Bernat Pop from Yarnspirations. This is one of those popular cake type yarns. And this color that I'm using is called Violet Vision. It's shades of lavender, purple, pinks. And each one of these is about 280 yards. This is one of those self-striping cake yarns that are so popular right now. And if you want to substitute yarn, just look for a yarn that recommends a uh, H five millimeter crochet hook. Even though I'm using the eye hook, um, I'm gonna go up a hook size just to get a little bit more drape on our cowl. So let's get started. Okay, so I went ahead and pulled a little bit of yarn out of this yarn cake. This is a center pull uh, cake of yarn, so it's not going to move around on your table too much. It's really easy to use. So what we're going to do is put a slip knot on our hook. Now, I may have mentioned this before, but this is a, a cowl for a beginner. So whether you're just learning how to crochet and you're ready to do something in the round, or if you just kind of need a refresher, this is a great project to start. We're using the self-striping yarn, so you're not gonna have to switch colors and things like that. You can really just focus on learning the stitches for this project. So let's do the slip knot on our hook to begin. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop. Reach in with your hook, bring up the loop, and tighten. Now our starting chain is 100 chains. But if you want to make it smaller for a child in, in circumference, or if you want to make it nice and large and loopy, almost like a capelet, uh, you can do more chains. It's totally up to you. I would do some chains and maybe wrap it around your neck and see how you like it. But there is no special stitch count. We're just going to be doing some simple double crochet stitches. So you can really make this however many chains you like. I'm gonna do 100 because I really liked the drape and the size of that cow. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around your hook and bring it through the loop. That's one. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the loop. That's two. Wrap the yarn around your hook, bring it through the loop. That's three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, and one hundred. So here is our starting chain. And once again, if this is too long for you for your cowl, I, this is a little bit of a generous size cowl. It's gonna have some nice drape to it. Uh, if this is too big for you, just uh, take out a few chains, and again, it doesn't need to be any special stitch count. So what we're going to do next is join our chain, and we're going to make the circle and the, the very beginning, the bottom part of our cow, and work our way upward. I wanted to mention, too, before we move on, that you want to make your starting chain fairly loose. Now, hold your hands nice and loose and try and relax your hands. I know when you're learning, uh, we tend to work a little tighter. 
If you're having a lot of trouble with this, try going up a hook size. So this is the I hook. Try going up to a J hook for just the starting chain and then move back down to the I hook for the rest of your project and that should help loosen up your chain a bit. If your chain is too tight, it could draw the project in and make it uh, look distorted, okay? So what we're gonna do is we still have our hook on our project. We're gonna go all the way down and I like to kind of smooth out the chain as I go like this with my thumb. You don't have to do this, but this kind of straightens everything out if it's twisty. And we're gonna go into that first chain that we made, the chain farthest from the hook, all the way down, that very first chain there. See, here's our yarn in where we began. Insert the hook into that chain, and then we're gonna wrap the yarn around our hook, bring it through that first loop, and bring it through that next loop. So you'll now have one loop on your hook. We just joined in the far, if you look at the written pattern on the Fiberflex blog, we just joined in the farthest chain from the hook with a slip stitch, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start building, we have the circumference of our cow. Now we're gonna start building height on our cow. So like I mentioned before, we're gonna use some simple double crochet stitches, okay? So what we wanna do is chain three. One, two, three. That will get us up to the height that we need. And then this chain three, you'll see this in written patterns sometimes, if you're a beginner and you're not familiar with written patterns or you're refreshing, um, this chain three, you'll see it, this counts as one of our double crochets, okay? So visually it's gonna look like uh, some of the other stitches that we're gonna be making. So we can get this tail out of the way for now, we'll worry about this later. So what we're gonna do, because this counts as the first double crochet, we're not gonna work into that very first chain. We're gonna to go to that next chain, okay? So what we wanna do is work a double crochet into that next chain. So wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into that chain, wrap yarn around hook again, bring up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. That's the double crochet stitch. I have a whole separate video on this stitch uh, you can check out as well. So let's do that a couple more times together. Wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into that next chain you come to. Wrap yarn around hook again and bring up a loop. Three loops will be on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. Let's do one more of these slowly and then we'll pick up some speed. Wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the next chain that you come to. Wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook again, bring it through the last two loops on your hook, okay? So we've done three double crochets together. Now you can see this little gap here where we worked, that, see that starting chain? This will kind of resolve itself as we continue, okay? So then what we're gonna do is wrap yarn around hook. We're gonna work our next double crochet. Insert it into the next chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring through the last two loops. With the Bernat pop that we're using, sometimes you get a little uh, smidge of color here and there. You can see there's one there too. Um, that bothers some people, I think it's fun. It just adds a little bit of, it looks like uh, sprinkles or confetti. So just as a side note. All right, let's pick up speed a little bit and work some more double crochets, okay? So we're gonna wrap yarn around hook, three loops are on the hook, bring through the first two loops, bring through the last two loops. If you need to see this stitch again more slowly with more explanation, just back up the video. You can back it up as many times as you need until you get the hang of it. And when you're just starting out with crochet, I would not worry so much about speed. The speed will come later. In fact, once you've been crocheting for a while, you'll, you'll be working and just think, wow, I've really gotten a little bit faster here. You know, it just kind of comes naturally on its own, okay? And if you need to pull more yarn out of your yarn cake, feel free to do that anytime. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep on working double crochets in every chain all the way around our cow. And you can see the double crochet stitch is a little bit taller than a single crochet stitch. So we already have a little bit of height on our cow. And with each round, we will be building up more and more height, okay? So just work your double crochets all the way around. 
If you're learning the double crochet stitch, this is going to be a wonderful project to help you master this stitch, okay? So just keep working your double crochets all the way around. Now once we get just before the end of the round, almost to the end of the round, we will rejoin and I'll show you how to finish up round one and how to transition onto round two. Okay, so keep working your double crochets and we'll rejoin in just a bit. Okay, so I'm just working the last couple of double crochets of round one. And then we're gonna finish off this round and move on to round two next. Okay, and again, we're just gonna worry about this tail later. All right, so remember that chain three at the beginning of the round? We're gonna work a slip stitch into the top of this to finish it off and close the round. So see, one, two, three chains up. So in that topmost chain, that third chain up, insert your hook into that chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring up the hook. Now you'll have two loops on your hook. Bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. Okay, and we've just closed off the round. And at the beginning of this round, I mentioned that pesky gap that gets in the way. It's more camouflage now, okay? So round one is complete. Now let's move on to round two. Okay, so I'm just working that very last double crochet into the last chain of the round. So then what we need to do is join with a slip stitch to close the round. So what you'll wanna do is, remember that starting chain we did at the beginning of the round to get our height? What you wanna do is count three chains up, one, two, three, and then we're gonna join in that third chain up, that topmost chain with a slip stitch. So insert the hook into that topmost chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. Now bring the loop that you just brought through through the loop that's already on your hook. So just bring it through just like that, and then round one is complete. And you can see that starting chain just blends right in with those other double crochets. So now we're ready to work on round two. And make sure when you join, just do a quick double check just to make sure your first round isn't twisted because you'll get like a sort of like a figure eight or a Mobius shape in your cow. But if you want like a cylindrical tube, you'll want to make sure that this isn't twisted. Sometimes when you're working into those chains, things can twist up a bit. So just do a quick double check of that. Okay, so we're going to move on to round two. So for round two, it's very similar to round one, but we're gonna be working into the stitches now instead of the chains. So what you wanna do is chain three, once again, one, two, and three. And then this chain three counts as one of our double crochets, so we're not gonna work down into the base of that. We're gonna hop over to this first stitch here. So you can see that starting chain and there's like a little loop at the top. You're not gonna work into that one. You're gonna hop over to this first stitch here, okay? So work a double crochet into that first stitch. Same thing you did, same double crochets as before. And then you're gonna work a double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So like I mentioned before, if you wanna master, if you're just starting out and you wanna master the double crochet stitch and make lots of them, this is a great project for that. It's also a really nice, quick and easy, kind of portable project too. If you're traveling or you just need something small to kind of tote around with you, the yarn is already wound into a cake you don't need to have multiple colors. Even though this will be a striped project when we're finished, uh, you don't need to worry about switching colors or carrying multiple balls of yarn. So this is a wonderful portable project as well as a great beginner or a good refresher project. Or if you're a seasoned crocheter, sometimes I just love to watch a movie and just have a really simple kind of mindless project just to work on, okay? So this is great for that as well. Now you can see we have just a little bit of pink left. We're gonna be switching color soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my double crochets all the way around for round two. And then once we get towards the end of this round, I'm gonna show you once again how to close up the round and finish off the round as well, okay? So just keep working and you can see there's some random blobs of purple happening, which I just love. So just keep working your double crochets all the way around and we'll rejoin in just a moment. 
Okay, so we're not quite to the end of the round yet, but our yarn is in the process of switching colors. So I just wanted to show you that really quick. And you can see it changes color kind of suddenly. It's not like a, a slow transition into the color, but we got about a round and a half out of this bright bubblegum pink. And now we're moving into kind of like a grape color. So if you do use the cake yarns for this project, just know that the color shifts will happen kind of all of a sudden. And I think that's a lot of fun and it makes for an interesting project. You'll want to like keep going and try and get to that next color. So I'm just going to keep working my double crochet stitches, but I just wanted to show you how those colors shift and it makes for a fun project. Okay, so I'm just working that very last stitch of round two. And then once again, we're gonna join in that topmost chain, that third chain up to close the round with a slip stitch. So one, two, three, insert the hook in that topmost chain. Make sure you get your hook into both loops of that. Bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook and round two is complete. So we've had a bit of a color change happening and our cowl is starting to get a little bit of height on it, okay? So what you wanna to do to finish your cowl, because this is a cowl for beginners, we're just gonna be repeating round two over and over and over until your cowl is as tall as you would like it to be or until you run out of yarn or whatever happens first. For me personally, in this cowl, I am going to just keep crocheting and see how far I can take it with this one cake. So we're gonna have quite a few color changes. We're on this dark purple now. It looks like it's gonna move into a lavender and then like a pale orchid and then back into kind of the pink family. So I'm gonna keep going. Now, if you need to see round two again, just back up the video a little bit and repeat that part of the video until you feel comfortable enough to watch it or, or to crochet without it, okay? So once again, to get started on round two, which is what we'll be repeating, you'll just chain three and then work your double crochet into that first stitch, whoops, of the round, and then just keep going, okay? So repeat round two over and over and over until your cowl is as tall as you'd like it to be. When we're finished and we get the height that we want, we're gonna learn how to finish off the cowl and deal with some of these ends. Now, if you use the cake like I am, you'll just have one end where you began and one end at the end where you leave off, okay? So keep repeating round two. We'll rejoin in just a moment and finish off our cowl. Okay, so I'm just working that very last stitch of the round. And then to close the round, same as we've been doing before, we're just going to join in that third chain up with a slip stitch to close the round. So insert the hook into that third chain up, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook and you're finished. Now I do have some yarn over here, but it's not quite enough to complete another full round around this cowl. So you can just save this in your scrap bin if you like. And then our cowl is complete. So let's move on to the finish work next. So to do our finish work, we're just gonna need to grab our scissors and a tapestry needle. And as you can see here, the striping of the colors of our project has really played out beautifully and it's a really pretty display of all the colors that were in the cake to begin with. And really with no effort on your part to have to switch the colors. So it's really fun to just let the colors play out and just keep crocheting. So what we wanna do is grab our scissors Go ahead and cut the yarn and then just fasten off by wrapping the yarn around the hook and pulling it through. Next, we're going to grab our tapestry needle and I am actually going to turn this inside out. Now this is technically reversible, but I'm going to establish the inside of this by weaving the ends on the inside. Now my end down here is this bright pink color. So what I want to do is just weave the end into the bright pink portion. We don't want to go into this other color because this tail will show through quite a bit. So what we're going to just do is go in one direction, going in and out through the loops with our tapestry needle, just all the way through. And you don't need to go too terribly far, just far enough to get it locked into place. 
And then if you have a very large tapestry needle like me, you might need to give it a little bit of a kind of a twirl to send that large eye of the needle through. And then what I like to do is just send it back in the other direction, just come back around and then just weave it in a little bit in the other direction and that will help keep it from popping out. It's not foolproof, ends like to pop out sometimes, but it certainly does help. Okay, so we're just gonna give it like a little, kinda just shimmy it through there. Okay, so give your tail a little tug and then we're gonna take our tapestry needle and just trim. And then we should have one on this side, yes. So what we're gonna do is just repeat on this side as well. Let me slide that up a little bit so you can see better. So it happens to be the same color. So just stick with the same concept and just send it through just this pink portion or purple or whatever color you happen to have. Now the, the cakes, the Karen cakes and the Bernat and all the brands that make the cake yarn that with the color changes like this, um, you might get a cake of the same colorway, but maybe yours might start with this dark purple or you know some of the colors uh, start in a different order. So just bring it through one direction and then come back in the other direction. And I wanted to point out too, with this particular yarn that I was using, there are little pops of other colors throughout and it kind of gives it a little heathered look and a little fun pop here and there. And you know, just so you know, if, if that's a thing that you're into or not, just so you know that this yarn does do that. Okay, so I went through both directions with my tail and I'm just gonna trim the yarn here. And then our cowl is complete. So what we can do is just flip it back out. And it is nice and drapey and comfortable and it's gonna be very warm in the colder months. And these really easy projects make wonderful gifts and they also make great first projects too, or even if you're learning how to crochet in the round or you've been curious about that. I know when I started crocheting, I made squares and rectangles for a very long time and later moved on to things worked in the round. So this is a great project too if you wanna to learn how to do something in the round. So I hope you enjoyed this cow project. And as always, please hit the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.